Hello, my name's Professor Kevin Hardy, and today in this presentation we're going to look at blood sugar testing. And blood sugar testing is vitally important for almost all people with type 1 diabetes and for a proportion, but certainly not all people with type 2 diabetes. So if you are testing, the first question I suppose is how often do I test? And the answer is, it depends. If you're well, you often need to test less frequently, whereas for people who are unwell, perhaps with a cough or a cold or an upset stomach, there's a need to monitor more closely during the illness. If your sugars are stable, you're probably going to need to test less frequently. And if they're, if they're unstable and bobbing around a bit, then there's probably a need for um, more frequent testing. There are certain special circumstances, such as driving, where the um, when you test and how you test is governed by law. And it's vitally important that all people with diabetes follow DVLA guidance around the management of uh, driving and diabetes to the letter. And I'm not going to cover this in any greater detail in this presentation, but I would suggest that everybody checks the DVLA website on a regular basis. So most people test between two and four days per week. When do I test? Um, most people on their test days will check the sugars four times. They'll check before breakfast when the usual target is between five and seven, before lunch where the usual target is between four and seven, before tea where the usual target is also between four and seven, and before bed, where the typical target is between 6 and 10. In much the same way that HbA1c overall blood sugar test targets vary from person to person, they should be individualised, so are the uh, self-monitoring targets, but the ones that I've just described are by far the most frequently used. Let's take a look at an example. Here's Bill. Bill's got a good range of tests um, in his diary and um, what we'll do is we will start by looking at the pre-breakfast sugars. Always start with the pre-breakfast sugars. So what we're interested here in is we're not interested in a single reading, we want a column of readings so that we can get an overall idea about what's going on because individual readings can be um, relatively misleading. So we look at Bill, we look at his pre-breakfast sugars, we find the first reading was actually okay. 6.7 is between his, uh, the target range he's aiming for, 5 to 7. But most of the rest of his readings are above the target range. So the overall message for Bill for his pre-breakfast sugars is they are largely too high. <clears throat> if Bill then looks at his pre-lunch sugars, where the target's between 4 and 7, again, most of the readings, all of the readings in fact, are higher than that target range. So pre-lunch sugars, too high. If Bill looks at his pre-tea sugars, where the range is between four and seven, most of the readings are in target, between four and seven. And then if Bill turns to pre-bed, where the range, the target range is between six and 10, actually most of the sugars are too low. 4.4, 3.9, 5.1, 5.5, 4.6, .5, all below the, the target range of six to 10. Let's take another example, Louise. Um, let's look at pre-breakfast sugars first, as we always do. Range, uh, target range is between five and seven, and what we find is that Louise's sugars are all way too high. By contrast, if we look at Louise's pre-lunch sugars, they're largely too low. Remember the range is four to seven, and she's got 2.9, 2.3, 3.1, 1.1. So generally, the overall message from Louise's pre-lunch sugars is that they are too low. Looking at Louise's sugars pre-tea, where the target's also between four and seven, they're high. And looking at Louise's sugars pre-bed, they are also uniformly too high. Let's have a look at Brian. Go to the pre-breakfast sugars first, as we always do. Target range is between 5 and 7, and Brian is predominantly 
too low before breakfast. 3.3, 3.1, 2.4, 4.1, 3.1. The overall message from Brian's pre-breakfast sugars, they're too low. When we look at Brian's pre-lunch sugars, where the target range is four to seven, they are also too low. Tea time for Brian, um, most of those sugars are okay. They're mostly between four and seven. So his pre-tea sugars are largely okay. And pre-bed, where you'll remember the target range is between six and 10, most of Brian's sugars are below the target range. Looking at Chris, Chris is a good example of where you can't tell. <clears throat> if we look at his pre-breakfast sugars, some of them are well too high, some of them are too low, and there isn't an overall message. And when that happens, what you do is you keep monitoring until you get enough results to be able to say, actually, the overall message from this column results is either they're too high or too low. For Chris pre-lunch, they are mostly too low. Chris's pre-tea sugars are largely okay. And pre-bed, again, it's unclear with some highs and some lows in terms of the target range. So it's not clear from Chris's results what the overall message is, so he keeps monitoring. He doesn't adjust on the basis of those sugar results. Looking at Ellie, um, Ellie's pre-breakfast, pre-lunch, pre-tea and pre-bed sugars are all largely within the relevant target ranges. Ellie's monitoring is good, and she certainly doesn't need to be monitoring that frequently now that she knows her sugars are okay. What about people with type 2 diabetes? Well, many people with type 2 diabetes don't need to check their blood sugars, um, but people with type 2 diabetes who are on insulin or on tab tablets that can make the sugars go too low will tend to be monitoring, they should be monitoring. What do you do if your sugars go up? Okay. What do you do if your sugars go too low? Again, occasional low sugars, particularly if you know why it went low, apart from treating the immediate sugar problem, you don't need to make any other change to your usual treatment plan. If on the other hand you have recurrent low sugars, um, you must treat them, treat the sugar result immediately, but then there's a suggestion if it's happening repeatedly that there's a need to change your usual treatment plan. In summary then, always treat low blood sugars, any sugar that's less than four, treat it immediately. If your sugars change, ask, do I feel well? And if you do feel well and your sugars are just running a bit high, monitor and expect them to settle. If your sugars go up and you feel unwell, follow sick day rules and if you're in any doubt at all, seek medical advice or not.